We need your cooperation for a little exercise. I'll be greeting the ladies first in Hebrew, and I'll be saying, Shalom Alach, which means peace to you all. And then you would respond to me or to God, Shalom. Okay, let's start. Shaba Shalom Alach. Amen. And now to the brethren, we would say, Shabbat Shalom Alachai. And then you respond, Shabbat Shalom. Let me hear you, please. Thank you very much. We would like the Filipino church to know that we've been observing you for a few years. And we have come to the conclusion that the most important thing for the members of this church is their salvation into the eternal kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. It's very encouraging, and we pray that you continue that way so that when the Lord returns, he does not find any of us lacking. But he can tell us, well done, thou good and faithful servants. Thou hast been faithful over a few. Enter thou into the joy of my Lord. I will make thee ruler over many. Somebody said, Pastor Clements, why are you talking so loud? I said, I want to make sure that I hear myself. <laughs> so today, we're going to preach to ourselves. And you are invited as good witnesses to listen to our discourse. We would start with the story of Nicodemus. Thank you. We're reading from the Bible. Let's go back to Nicodemus, please. John chapter 3. There you go. We're looking in John chapter 3, and we would read as you follow. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. a ruler of the Jews. So we would call him today church administrator, church manager, church director. He was in high position. The name, the same came to Jesus by night and said to him, note well what time Nicodemus went to Jesus by night. I would like to tell you that Jesus is usually not asleep at night. He's somewhere in the mountain praying. He can pray all night. Because Jesus believes he cannot make it without prayer. 
So he found Jesus somewhere in a nightly situation. And of course, he didn't want the public to see him going to Jesus, who was considered an outcast by the church leadership of then. And said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher. Come from God. For uh, no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Please listen to the testimony that this high church officer is making. Jesus answers and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily I say unto thee, except a man be born again of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh and shall and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee ye must be born again. Jesus, Jesus talking to Nicodemus, but he's talking to an uncounted multitude. Ye, everybody. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof. But canst thou tell whence it cometh, cometh and whither it goeth? So it is everyone that is born of the Spirit. It is a mystery, and nobody can know how that life would be led under the Holy Spirit. Nicodemus said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a church administrator, a church manager, a church director, a conference president, and knows not these things. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify what we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. Jesus start reproaching Nicodemus, such a high man in the church, and the simple things of knowing Christ, he does not know and does not understand. If I had told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of the heavenly things? Nicod Jesus is re recommending Nicodemus that all the life on earth from the birth of the flesh is preparation for the birth of the spirit to go into the heavenly living. And no man have ascended up to heaven 
but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Nobody can enter heaven if Jesus was not resurrected, went to heaven, and is coming back to claim his own. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. The serpent, such a terrible creature, the representative representation of sin. And Jesus Christ had to be considered sin before you and I can be saved because all, all our guilt has passed on top of him. That's why Jesus said at the cross, My Father, my Father, why hast thou forsaken me? The Father could not look upon the Son with all the sins loaded upon him, all the sickness, leprosy, you name it, Jesus bore all for us. That whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. My dear friend, the gasoline for our life is belief. If there's no gas in the car, the car, the vehicle goes nowhere. We must believe. Not once. Not sometime. But all the time. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in that son the life that the Son has lived, the sacrifice that the Son has made, will not perish, but shall have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Nicodemus we're going to check on the commentary of the spirit of prophecy. You may ask me why I believe in the spirit of prophecy. I consider the spirit of prophecy the highest commentary on the Bible. The Holy Spirit is the fine print of the Bible. If everything were to be written in the Bible, even if you put all the 66 books or 70 books of Sister White together with the 66 book, all has not been told. We have to de depend on the daily unction of the Holy Spirit to guide our life. Just while driving, you have to make decisions moment by moment in six split second to avoid accident and to save your life. So the Holy Spirit is needed in our life. Constantly the flow has to be from heaven to us. As we told you before, or maybe we didn't tell you that, Nicodemus means victor over the people. What does Nicodemus mean? Victor over the people. So please don't hesitate when you're getting a baby boy to call him Nicodemus. Please. Now, do you know that Nicodemus was a listener of John the Baptist? John the Baptist, the greatest of all prophets who lived a very short life because he was beheaded 
as a birthday, as a present to a birthday party of King Herod. John Nicodemus was a Pharisee. And uh, he has secretly witnessed the miracles of Jesus Christ. And the time came that the pressure that was building up in him, he couldn't hold it any longer. He has to meet Christ. And when he met Christ, he experience a saving connection. He was a changed man. He understood what it meant to know Christ and to make him known. When Nicodemus got explained the birth, nobody goes to heaven unless you are born twice. The first time by your earthly parents and the second time by the Holy Spirit through water. You remember when Jesus was baptized in the River Jordan? One of the few times that the Father spoke audibly to him, he said, This is my Son, my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And God wants to say that to each one of us because of our faith, our endurance, our holding on till the end. Cornelius went back to his council, you'll call it the church board or the conference board or General Conference Committee, how you want to call it, and uh, the other uh, members of the Sanhedrin start criticizing what Jesus is doing. He's drawing a crowd after him, and nobody is paying so much attention to these Jewish leaders as they do to Jesus. Something must be done to stop him. And Nicodemus get up and defended Jesus. And of course, that didn't sit so well with the rest of the Sanhedrin. And Jesus, Nicodemus make another friend in the Sanhedrin, better known as Joseph of Arimathea. And the two of them are joining together, forming converted members of the Sanhedrin. And when Jesus was crucified on the cross, from a distance, Nicodemus stood and looked, and his faith was confirmed. He said, I will follow him till death. Not by might, not by power, but by his Holy Spirit. And Nicodemus show he put his faith into works. When Jesus was condemned as the worst criminal in the nation and was to be buried in a criminal burial ground, Nicodemus and Joseph Armatia, wealthy men, have their own private burial place, say no, Jesus will be buried in my burial place. And uh, they came together, brought the necessary preparation for the body and uh, anointed him, not sorry, um, they embalmed him about a hundred pounds 
of aloes and myrrh these two wealthy men put together to prepare the body of Jesus Christ. And uh, Nicodemus, he start going, mixing with the Christians after Jesus Christ's ascension and understood fully the plan of salvation. In our sojourn, it is so important that we begin, we're only beginning to understand the plan of salvation in our lifetime on earth. When Jesus takes us home, we will spend eternity to study the plan of salvation. Why? Because it is divine. And divinity, div di divine things are eternal, everlasting. And Nicodemus told John, the writer of the gospel and the epistle, about his first visit. That's why John con could write it under inspiration. And uh, Nicodemus left this earthly life with the hope that one day, face to face with Christ my Savior, face to face, what will it be when in rapture I behold him, Jesus Christ, my loving Savior? Let us live with that hope that Jesus shall be our own as time lasts by. So we read in John chapter 3, most assuredly, I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot, that's a very strong word, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So we are happy Christians when we are humble when we are following the guidance of the Spirit. But when we can be unhappy, and not even Christians, we want to serve the Lord how we want. And that cannot be. We are sinners. We cannot tell the divine how it should be. Let us follow the divine, and gradually we will change from the sinful into saints and share the divine holiness of the triune God. We look at Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9. His word was in my heart as a burning fire up in my bones and I was weary with forbearing and I could not sing. Do you know when the conviction of the Spirit is working through us, you think you are having Arthritis. You think you're having rheumatism. Everything starts cracking in you. And you need to do something about it. We thank God for his spirit that is working within us. And remember, once we experience what Paul is saying. I die daily. 
That is not a joke. Daily we have to die to the sinful self. Tomorrow you get up, Satan is there again to put all kind of foolish thoughts in you and let you go the wrong way, but you need to die again. So it's like a daily baptism, but we do it in the spirit, not by our own, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the illustration, brother a technician, so we could continue our sermon. Thank you. As you see there, you are seeing a caterpillar. And you are seeing the monarch butterfly. You know, once you are converted to Ruli, the caterpillar you dies. And what comes up in the holy living? A monarch butterfly. Now be honest, let's be honest with one another. Anybody who knows or has experienced or can prove that a butterfly turned back to become a caterpillar, please put up your hand. Do you see what conversion is? If you are really converted, you cannot go back to the old life of sin. Amen. Lying and cursing and robbing the Lord in tithes. You can't do that anymore. Once a caterpillar turns into a butterfly, he can never turn a caterpillar again. Once a butterfly, he flies higher and higher till death meets it. Do you know the, cater the butterflies, the monarch, is born in Canada and flies over the United States and dies into Mexico. Once you are converted, you are born again, you cannot unborn yourself. Once converted, you are sanctified through the Holy Spirit till translation or resurrection. The Lord will meet you in the air to fly like a butterfly with him to paradise of glory. We want to, as we said, we will be preaching to ourselves. And you are invited to listen. When we then know the truth, the three angels' message, we ate and drank anything that is served on the table. Shark, catfish, those of you, South America, cascadu, you know, anything that is served. We eat wild in the wild things and don't talk about pig. Well, as a teenager, we were invited to attend a crusade conducted by an American Adventist pastor 
in the city of Paramaribo. So for three weeks, I was a pharmacy tech that time. As they were closing, I was closing the pharmacy. This young lady, a Jewish young lady, run and hand me the handbill. What I do, first week, in the draw. Second week, in the draw. Third week, in the draw. I don't even read it. But the fourth one, I said to myself, look how this young lady is trying so hard to reach me, and what do I do with the invitation? So I read the invitation. Why do the Jews keep Saturday as the seventh day? And why do Christians keep the first day as the Sabbath? I couldn't answer that question. And uh, I talked to the pharmacist. I said, Doctor, let's go to this meeting because the Bible speaks of false prophets that would be coming. Let's again hear how false they are. So he, of course, being an adult, I'm a teenager, he said, I'll pay the bus for you. You go and come and tell me how it has been. Well, can you imagine me riding the bus for the first time in my life? New bus running through the city. And uh, I went to the meeting. Thank God for God's Holy Spirit. Within half an hour, I was a changed person. I have never seen, heard such clear truth in all my teenage life. So um, I came back and I told the doctor, he said, you keep going, you keep going. And uh, of course, when you want to follow the truth, you'll get opposition. So the devil didn't leave me alone We other contemporaries of mine, a group of teenage boys. We're going to the crusade now, not to hear the truth, but to when the light go off, when they have the pictures on the screen, we're looking where the old people are sitting who are falling asleep during the, the lecture. Some of them, they have a hard time keeping their dentures in their mouth. And we'll sit behind and we laugh, man. Every night we go to the crusade, looking where the old people are sitting and sit behind them and mock them. You see how the devil works? But God grant, after a few weeks, of letting the devil use us, God's spirit, when the altar call was made for total surrender to Jesus Christ, we surrendered. And on March the 21st, 1946, we got baptized in God's remnant church. Amen. And... Uh, we want to use a more radical example, close home. A, a, a tele-evangelist of world renown. When I was working in other country, my members were telling me, why don't you invite that man to come and hold a crusade here? I said, well, I'm not convinced with all his popularity that he's preaching the truth. He doesn't know God's will for this time. So a newspaper man, you know, in this uh, world, when you get too popular, 
Somebody is going to look for something to draw you down, make you fall down. So a newspaper man followed this famous televangelist. Every morning, he leaves, he tells his wife, and everybody prepare for him, he's going to jog. And what is, when he jog around the corner, he goes to a prostitute. Tell an evangelist of world renown. His name is J.S. Jim Swaggart. And uh, of course, newspaper glad to have something bring you down. And when that was published, it was such a shame that a pastor who is to convert people is visiting prostitute, unfair to his, unfaithful to his wife, to his family, and bringing STD, sexual trans something disease. Is that conversion? He, the caterpillar, the monarch, went back to the caterpillar stage. Something impossible, but the devil makes it happen. So let us learn example from one another. Let us, by God's grace, develop from the caterpillar into the butterfly, the monarch butterfly, the crown butterfly. And we're going to read a poem for you, which would uh, prepare us for the next part of the servant. By the way, I'm supposed to do only the introduction of the service. <laughs> pastor Dan Kataige, our senior pastor, would do the rest. So remember, it's only the introduction you just heard. <laughs> Today, I saw two butterflies. Floating through the air, when I beheld their beauty, I knew God made despair. Such tiny little bodies holding up their wings, only God Almighty could make such precious things. Yet, it was God who made them both, and God who set them free, and did the same with all mankind, including you and me. Butterflies don't have a choice. No path that they must choose. They just fulfill the Lord's intent. They cannot win or lose. But life for us is different. It isn't quite the same. For we can turn our backs on God and play the devil's game. But if we choose the devil's path, the cost is much too high, for Satan will destroy our lives, then laugh the day we die. I am one who's made my choice. I will not play the game. I will serve the Lord each day 
and glorify his name. Since the day I made that choice, I have seen life differently. For now, I see the things of God, the things he's done for me. He's given me breath of life, for sight in my eyes. And when he wants to see me, my smile, he shows me butterflies. Thank you, Lord. I don't see Pastor Patange, Katange, but he is to follow me now. Pastor Katange, would you please be resurrected? Butterflies are God's gift to us whenever we see them. Let's be reminded that we are created to soar high, Amen. to be beautiful, and for others to see how the Lord has blessed us. We're living in an age where there's so much uncertainties. We're happy that we are not living in South Korea. We're happy that we are not in Guam. But the best thing that makes us happy is that we are in God's kingdom. Amen. The God we serve is a God of power and a God of love. The Lord says, be still and know that I am God. Our only aim is that we don't go back to where we came from. Let's not go back to become caterpillars again. Let's hold on to the promise of the Lord to move forward by His Spirit each day to be renewed in our relationship with Him. Each day is better than yesterday. And each day is a step closer to the coming of the Lord. There may be some of us who are going through tough times. And we have gone far from the Lord because of different circumstances. It's high time that we allow His Spirit to draw us closer to Him again. It's time for revival. It's time for renewal. It's time for full restoration. It won't take long. There's an author who says that we can almost hear the footsteps of Jesus coming closer to rescue us. By His grace, we will make it. It's our choice. So my dear brothers and sisters, we can rededicate our lives again to the Lord. We can say, Lord, the call of the wild is strong always. There's always that force to go back to where we came from. But it's only your spirit that can hold us up. Those of you who want to say to the Lord, Lord, please help me by your spirit to walk each day close to you. If it's your desire, can I ask you to stand that we may have a special prayer? Thank you, Lord, for the message. Thank you for the reminder that you braced us up from where we came from, from the mud, from the darkness of sin, from our frailties, you led us to a higher walk, to a higher spirituality, which is only possible by your grace. There are times, Lord, when we are defeated by the enemy. We succumb to circumstances because of our weakness. 
but because of our choice. We fail to trust you, Lord. But now, hold our hands, our weak hands, and lift us up again. Help us to walk with you each day, more intimate than before. Help us to be renewed in our passion. We remember those times when we were newly baptized. We can't wait until the Sabbath comes. We bring our Bibles, we bring our hymnals, we bring our quarterlies. We're so excited to be in your presence. But Lord, there were times when we get discouraged. There were times when the enemy comes too close and we'll believe him more than we believe you. There are times when our weaknesses bring us far from you. But Lord, your spirit is strong. You're calling us back. You are our almighty God when political environment is not that safe. When chaos all around us are rampant. When our finances, our work, and our family are going through hard times. Lord, remember us. Lift us up. Let nothing draw us away from you. Nothing can separate us from your love, O Lord. Help us to realize that if we only choose, if we only decide, if we only surrender, if we only commit ourselves to you, then you will do the rest. So Lord, this morning, accept our commitment, accept our dedication, and from here, help us to walk humbly, more concentrated, consecrated, more committed. And when you come, Lord, we want to be there flying butterflies transform into your likeness and ready to be transported into your eternal kingdom for yes is all in jesus name amen